and that is in categorical form now. So that's the first one. But let's take note of the terms we've gathered so far. So here is a list of terms that we have. Remember, we are supposed to have three. So our first one is influencers. Our second one is liars. And we do not know our third one yet. Remember, in logic, since we are evaluating not so much the truthfulness of this argument, though, of course, that's important, we are focusing more on the validity of its structure. We can also simplify our terms by substituting them with symbols. So for instance, just like we used to write our propositions in this way, all S is P, subject and predicate, we could use any letter at all. For instance, I could use the letter I to represent influencers. I could use any letter I want. I could use S or O or whatever, but I feel like I is a good letter to help represent influencers. I'm also going to use L to represent liars. This way, I could further simplify this proposition to being some I R L. And there I have the same proposition, but it's even more simple. And this will help me visually see if the structure of my argument is valid in the end. We'll come back to using symbols because it's going to be something we will do more in the future, especially as the propositions we deal with become increasingly complex. If you have propositions that have very long terms, such as social media influencers, or some terms are even longer than that, you'll see that as we keep going, substituting them with a symbol that represents the whole term can help to save space and save brain energy and help us to be able to see the syllogism better. So here are two possible renderings for this. If you're not comfortable with using symbols yet, that's all right. You do not have to yet, but be aware that that is something that we will be doing more and more. So remember, symbols can just be whatever you come up with, but use them consistently. So here we go. Some IRL is nice and tidy. As a note, you could continue to use S and P in the place of subject and predicate, that's acceptable, but I think it's easier to keep track of which symbol represents which term if you find symbols that are more directly related to the term. For instance, I is related to influencers because it starts with an I and L to liars for the same reason. But again, do what makes the most sense in your mind. Let's go to the second proposition. I'm going to remove the outline real fast, give myself more workspace. XX influencer is an influencer who has some unrealistic photos. Okay, here's a hint. This proposition has some excess that we can trim off. In fact, we'll have to trim some off in order to keep the terms consistent because we've kept our terms pretty short. So let's translate it first. Let's start by finding the subject and the predicate. So XX influencer is our subject and an influencer who has some unrealistic photos would be the predicate. And obviously you can see the copula is already here. Now we need to find the quantifier. What is the quality and quantity of this proposition? Well, it appears to be affirmative. So we're dealing with either all or some. Is it universal or particular? And you would say, well, Mrs. Anderson, being the brilliant student that I am, I can see that as a single subject, which of course means that the proposition is universal. Our proposition begins with all. All at XX influencer is an influencer who has some unrealistic photos. Okay. okay, here's the fun bit. The term uninfluencer who has some unrealistic photos is a bit lengthy and unnecessary. Also, it doesn't match the terms that we've defined since we have a third term now. Since our third term is now at XX influencers, we really can't have this as a separate term. So we need to make it match one of the existing terms. And it does, it matches this one. So let's just get rid of the excess. If you prefer, you can put it in parentheses so that you don't forget what the sentence is about. But I'm going to rewrite this as, there you go. And if I want to further simplify it, let's say that XX influencer, the symbol for that is X. That makes sense to me. And then we'd have our simplified form, which is all X is I. Okay, you can see how this is going. Let me just highlight these real fast. All right, well done. Now let's see the conclusion. I'll just tell you right off the bat that we can get rid of these so it's clear. We just don't need it. It is excess. I'm going to copy this down here and edit it. Let's get rid of the so is clear. The proposition begins with she lies about her appearance. So we can actually get rid of the so it's clear that. That's a summary statement, but it doesn't really contribute anything to the proposition. So we will just boop, get rid of it. Okay, our subject is she, and then our predicate is everything else. Lies about our 
her appearance. But we can't keep these terms this way because they don't match the three that we have up here. So what could we substitute them with? Let's see, she. Well, that matches XX influencer. So let's use that instead. So we're substituting she equals at XX influencer. So therefore, at XX influencer lies about her appearance. Now, we need a copula and we need a quantifier. And since we have a single subject, let's start with the quantifier because we know that this single subject proposition is universal and it also is affirmative. So all at XX influencer is. And then we have is lies about her appearance. So let's just adjust that is a liar about her appearance. And then one again, we have uh, the ability to get rid of this excess, which makes the terms match our options of terms and trims off the excess that we don't need. When simplified, this becomes all X is L. Okay, so all together, let's write it out this way. And again, you can leave in these parenthetical statements, just make them part of the predicate terms. So if we were to change this, we would just say liars about their appearance, and we would just say social media influencers. These are both fine. I'm just gonna put them in parentheses up here so that you can see them. Okay. Now let's write this all out. Some influencers are liars. All at XX influencers is an influencer. Therefore all XX influencer is a liar. Now let's write this out as simplified. If you like to use symbols instead of terms, that can be good. Some I is L, all X is I, therefore all X is L. Okay, cool beans. Now later we're going to be able to decide if this syllogism is valid or not. Maybe you can see problems with it already. I think that I can. But we'll learn how to identify the validity of a syllogism in the future. For now, I want you to focus on being able to arrange the syllogisms. So don't worry too much about the overall pattern as long as you have all the rules. You have three propositions, a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion, and you have three terms used twice each. If you get that in the end and you've kept the meaning of the original, then you are ready to go. So as you can see, we've used all three of our terms or here if this is helpful and we've used each one twice and they are in the correct order. Can you see which one of these terms is the middle term? Remember that the middle term will appear in the two premises, but not in the conclusion because it is the one that connects the major and minor terms. So in this instance, the middle term is influencer. Remember, the major term is the predicate in the conclusion and the minor term is the subject in the conclusion. All right, well done. We're going to do one more. It's the second one from the book. I do want you to do the reading and to work through the first one that they do with you in the book so that you can understand how this works. But I'm going to do the second one in the book with you.